Hi guys, this is Jack from Jackdaw Locksmiths and today we're going to be talking about Mortis Ox. We're going to start this off by showing you a free lever mortise lock. These you will find internally for your internal doors. If you do happen to find one of these on your external doors, I highly suggest that you phone your local locksmith and get them to change it for a five lever British standard. Now uh, here's the first free lever lock. You can tell from the front, free lever, this is an era. This I have on one of my internal doors, so it's had lots of use. What I mean by free lever are these little guys. As the key turns, these move up and the bolt, as you see there, comes into play as these lift and throws the bolt out. It's a free lever because, as very simply it says, there are free levers and this one happens to have a space of two. These don't matter as far as the function, it's just to keep the distances for what the key is. Alright, so there's your free lever internal. Now let's have a look at the external. And here's your five lever external. This is British standard. You can tell the material is a lot thicker. The also has a anti-drill plate, which makes it harder to drill. They also have what's called a curtain, which the key slips into throws the bolt out like that. The insides are fairly similar to the free lever apart from the curtain. I'll show you that here. You may have seen my video on rekeying an era fortress. It's exactly what this is. It's an Eva Fortress. So I've already shown the internal, so I won't go crazy on the description. So you can check out the video I'll put here. But this is a five lever. So if you see down the pack, we have one, two, three, four, five. And the keys for these is this is here. You see one, two, that's another cup of three, four, five, six, seven. And you're wondering why why there's seven cuts for a five lever key. Well the first two cuts actually get hidden by the curtain, as you can see there. If you can see. Come on camera. And what that does is it allows the count to be one two, three, four, five. Now, you'll always have your number five and your number three the same. This is to make sure you can open it from one side and the other. From the other side. And now I'll show you a five lever British standard sash lock. And here is the same version, only a sash lock instead. The difference between a sash lock and a deadlock is this. So this is where your handle will go, and as you twist the handle, it opens the latch. Same operation, key in here, turn, throws the bolt. These, although they're good, they're not perfect when it comes to securing your property. So we suggest that you also add a night latch onto your door as well. A night latch is just an extra bolt that gets thrown out above. This is just to give you some extra added security. So I'll show you that now. And this is a night latch. This isn't a British standard. This is just a cheap TSS version, but for just talking through, it's fine. 
What these do, they get mounted to your door. And as your door shuts, they lock in. Like that there. Once that's locked, all you need to do is retract this latch down. And the bolt. Go back in. From the outside, you have one of these. Which fit into the slot here. So that's all you'll see from the outside. Just your standard key and cylinder. These have a deadlocking function. So if you flip the switch, then it won't open. Problem with these is if you do flip the switch, it won't open from either side. Another constant problem is as these get old, these start getting loose, especially if the door slams. These do have a tendency to drop by themselves, which obviously your door is locked because you've slammed it. So slam, that falls, you can't open it from the back, and you can't open it from the front either. This is where you're going to have to call somebody. The problem with these is obviously you can't pick it because it's a latch and even throwing it won't move. Same with bumping. Anything you can do to turn the core just it won't turn. If for some reason it's locked and you can retract the bolt. There's other methods of entry and picking will work for that. So there's some upsides and downsides to them. But as a general rule, if you do have such as this on your house, make sure you get a British standard night latch to go with it. Because like I said, this isn't British standard, but it's just for demonstration purposes. Next I'm going to show you something a bit different. A sort of compromise between the night latch and the mortise locks. Now the compromise is one of these. You can also get these in sash too. So they'll have the latch. But you'll see... The keyhole is significantly bigger, and that's because these are designed for cylinders. So you put the cylinder in. I'll throw the latch. Let's turn it around, I'll screw it in. Then what you've got is you've got a lock for your wooden door, a mortised lock. Mortised means it's internal on the door. But you have a cylinder that enables it to work. Now, as I explained in the last video about cylinders, you do want get a good cylinder because these are only as strong as the cylinder is they're still susceptible to such a snapping this is a one star ERA and there's still no anti-snap to it I believe they are on different versions of the era one star uh, just this one that I've got for demonstration purposes as I did in the last video doesn't So, there you go. I hope this was informative and helpful. Uh, drop us a comment, give us a thumbs up. Okie dokie. Just did a, as an added extra, I haven't added key and knob style locks onto this. They can be used for wooden doors, but they're more of an American across the pond sort of thing. Um, if you're interested in viewing things about them, I highly suggest you go see SE Lock and Key. I'll leave a link 
in the description to his channel. I also have a card up here. Alright guys, have a good one.